I was in a class called Race Relations, and we watched a movie called uh, Just Black, and it was on biracial identity formation. And the movie was done in, I believe, 1992-93, so it was a little outdated, but it had really good information, and I knew a couple people. I have a few friends that are biracial, and I knew that the things that they talked about back in 93 um, are things that these people still talk about today, so I decided to do a project on that for my senior project that was you know, more up to date and had more current information and try to draw, you know, some correlations to see if things were the same or different or just how, you know, multiracial people identify today. I know a lot of things have changed since mid early 90s. Um, there's uh, actually like census has a, um, a section for people to check more than one race now. Some, some of them have even mixed race categories. So that's what got me into doing this for my senior project. That's just something I always wanted to do and I thought, hey, why not do it now, a perfect opportunity on something that's a social issue. So. When I was younger, my family didn't really discuss race with me and my brothers. My mom taught me at a young age that because I was black, I was gonna be dealing with different situations. There's probably two or three key things that I learned. Um, one thing is that uh, multiracial identity is a work in progress. Um, by saying that, that means it's an identity in progress. Like. Someone can identify as one thing at one point in their life and it can change throughout things like social interactions, things, any type of events that can happen, and it can change the way people will like racially identify themselves as a multiracial or biracial person. The second thing is that there's three different types of ways to identify yourself as a multiracial person or biracial person. Blended identity, singular identity, and transcendent identity. And the difference between those is blended identity is someone who chooses to identify with all their parts in their racial makeup. Singular is someone that chooses to um, just identify as one part or maybe two, depending on how many they have parts of their racial identity. And then transcendent is people that choose not to identify with any of those parts and they're actually just you know considered human. They don't wanna identify racially with anything. The third thing that I found, which was kind of striking to me was here in this campus, um, there's no student groups for multiracial, biracial people or any mix, or mixed race people. One of the main things that like I always got teased about was I'm half white, but I don't eat mayonnaise. It's not as easy to identify racially in a society that creates such strict racial categories and places people in such strict categories because you know these people come from two different backgrounds. I mean, their parents had to deal with things just for their relationship to work and to create a child that is multiracial. And, you know, things are changing, you know. The population for multiracial people is, you know, increasing every year. So it's something that's gonna get more and more common. Well, from what I got from my interviews was that the environment here at the U forces people to choose between one or the other. Like, people that are born multiracial find it really difficult to actually identify as multiracial on this campus. Because of my last name being Asian, they assumed that I couldn't speak English. A lot of people have never had to make that choice. And coming here, or coming to this school, really p puts people in a bind, like, well, where, where, where do I fit in? Where do I go? And sometimes they don't choose either one because, you know, it's such a split decision, they don't want to make it. It has gotten better for multiracial people, but it's still that thing where they have to deny things. It's kind of like here on the campus, like you either are this or you're that. You can't be both. It's grown and grown. On the block, Ellis Milan got it. That is Minnesota Golden Go for basketball. I was aware that she was in multiracial before. Um, or when I met her, I knew, just because she, you know, told me about that. Because we kind of lived close to each other in the same neighborhood as well. I know that she pretty much integrated well with a lot of people, and that might have been because she was a very good basketball player. She's pretty much a star basketball player, probably the best in our high school. I'm quite sure other people knew as well that she was, you know, by our multiracial, because um, her mother or her father probably came to the game, so. But yeah, it was something that wasn't hidden and we knew about it. So it was never a thing like, well, should I talk to her? Because I don't know, she doesn't look, you know, 100% black and she doesn't look 100% white or whatever the case may be. It was never nothing like that. Coming from, you know, St. Paul Public School System, it's pretty well integrated. Like, you have people from all over. So 
you, you're going to meet people from all different types of backgrounds, no matter who they are. I don't think that you're really judging people, especially in the public school system where, you know, you're just trying to have fun and try to go to school, learn, and get out of there. You have people like Tiger Woods that are out in the public. You have people like, you know, Alicia Keys. You have people like Barack Obama. You have all the Holly Berry, the list goes on and on. And these people are people that are in society that other people look to. These are the people that people see and they're like, hey, that's, that's who they are and so am I. So I think that's becoming more, you know, culturally acceptable than anything. You say Barack Obama is the first black president, but he's had this. And, you know, Tiger Woods is seen as the first black golfer, but he's not 100% black. People are getting over their um, misunderstanding about race relations now. Without pop culture and, you know, superstars, a lot of things probably wouldn't change anyway, because people really gravita gravitate towards, you know, stardom. And that's what really molds American society is by popularity things. Personally, I see race slowly getting better, but it's still staying constant on where it is now. It's more of a institutionalized thing. It's more of a covert thing. It's undercover. Race relations is something in our country, or pretty much in the world, that is going to be a difficult thing to get by. I believe we have other issues that will help if we get rid of things like class issues, gender issues, sexuality, sexuality issues. People have seen it though and, and said that it's it's more one race than another. As it continues to grow, I believe uh, that it should help race relations more than anything. If it's becoming something that's you know a cultural phenomenon or more popular, then people somewhat draw to it and it becomes more acceptable. Most people perceive that I'm just white and um, that bothers me because I do not want to you know omit the other side of who I am. It would make people really think about, you know, is it a problem that, you know, races blend together? Or is it a problem that, you know, this group might get along with this group? So I believe that, that um, any, if anything, it should help our society have a better racial, like, conscious. It really usually depends on where I am in the world. It's what people think I am. Multiracial, you know, identity is something that is important. It's important to them and it should be important to our society to help either identify these people or whatever the case may be. It's just, th these are you know, people as well and they shouldn't be left behind or forced to choose between you know, one parent or the other or whatever the case may be.